Do you have to be invited, or you could ask to join on Piazza? Uh, students, you can just ask. You can just sign in. Oh, okay. You have to have Fresno State email, or anybody? Uh, Any should email should work. So when these videos get on the web, that'll be cool if we start getting people <laughs> from like all over crazy places. I'm not in the class, but can you help me? <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk a little bit about slice, map, new, and make, and struct. And so we've looked at Boolean numeric string. Now we're going to look at slice, struct, map. And a slice is a list. And so you can do things like this. There's a list of letters, a string, right? And so that's a notation, line 7, slice of strings. And then I have a bunch of strings. Even though those are single characters, I, what makes them strings? Duh. Double quotes. And uh, if they're single quotes, they would be what? What type? What type would they be if they're single quotes? I'd have a slice of what? Yeah, rune or int 32. Or I think, I think just int 32. You can't do you int 32. Yeah, and so the uh, difference between slice, slicing, and index access, because they all kind of have ways in which they could be confusing or overlap a little bit using brackets or same names. So the slice is uh, line 7, and slicing is line 10, 9. So this is slicing, and then index access is line 10. And so you can see that printing out right here. Um, yeah. The... In, in line 10, is there an implied zero for the front of that when you do an index like that? Yeah, it's a zero-based index. Okay, so it's like the, a zero colon two, is that implied? Or? No, uh, so right here on line 10, I'm saying just give me what's at position two. Okay. And so at what's at position two is zero, one, two, it's C, and it gave me C right there. And when I say what's at position two in the string, zero, one, two, S, and capital S, and that's 83. I wrote a really cool little thing last night under, I believe, types, and I think it's seven. And this little chunk of code right here, change directory 16, and then I think we're going to see this in a second, but it's kind of fun to watch it run. And so uh, it loops, right, just over a set range or whatever that's the wrong word but you know over a, a range of numbers from 0 to 999 and uh, it prints uh, the number and then a dash and then it says uh, what is that conversion or assertion conversion and uh, and it, it's converting I which is a number to a string and so we can see all of UTF-8 and well this only goes so far in my little web but oh hey it went Cool, right? So here's all of UTF-8, right? ASCII kind of at the beginning there. And what was that one we were just looking at was uh, capital S is 83. And so 83 is capital S. That's cool. And you can come down here and just look at all these other tripped out characters from different languages around the world. Like what? What is that? I like that. Um, I hit record. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. All right. So slice types. I've sort of highlighted the things which are uh, relevant here. But there's an example of slices. You know, the black stuff up here. Uh, just for your reference, as we're looking at that. Notice the trailing comma at the end. That's idiomatic. 94% uh, certainty on that answer. Um, and that's right, isn't that? Slice type, trailing comma, when you declare. Um, it's required if it's on multiple lines. It's not uh, all the same. Yeah. Okay. But just so if you add to it or take away, it's not a big deal. And it, beneath slices, there's an underlying array. And so slice, and here's the BNF, you know, uh, uh, you have these two brackets and then the element type that you want to create a slice of. You can take length on it. Unlike with arrays, it may change during execution. Length will change. So slices are kind of, you know, they adjust. Ele and arrays do not. Elements can be addressed by integer indices. Uh, there's capacity, and then there's also length. And so when you define a slice, you can say, hey, make, me, make a slice. 
and give it the length and capacity. If you just give it one number, that number serves as both. And so what's, what is that? Well, if I had like here a slice of ants with a length of 50 and a capacity of 100, well, it created an underlying array with 100 spots. I'm only using 50. So as my slice of ants grows, it, it will be able to fill in those other spots without creating a new underlying array. If I get to 101, it has to create a new underlying array. And what it does is it just doubles the capacity. So it would go up to 200, 400, 800, 1600. So it could just be, it's just a little bit more efficient. You know, if you know, hey, it's going to grow, let me just, you know, give it the room to grow into so it doesn't have to replicate. It's probably a, a, a minor thing. There's a, a function cap A, which will show you the capacity. So to make a slice, here's just a slice of it, and I'm ranging over it. And so that range, you know, deal right there, four key value is equal to range. And I print out the key, the one, the, you know, iteration loop I'm on, and then the value, and bop, 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 and zero base. And making a slice, right? So we saw this from last week, and, and also, because uh, that's right, when MIDI came, is MIDI in there? No, so, he's not. So the comma is required for this form. If it's separated on multiple lines, you do need the trailing comma. Go Cool. So there's two ways uh, to loop over and get the same results. I'm using range in the first loop, and I'm using, uh, you know, just what is this, the index condition post right there. What's up, Nee? Uh, yeah, it'll automatically grow its capacity for you. So if you, if like here, I set it to 50, 100, 50 length, capacity 100, and I added in the 101st element, then it's going to automatically make the capacity 200. I don't have to do anything. So that way you initialize it, right? What's that? That way you're initializing a, a slice of length and capacity, but the other way you just uh, the difference between doing the shorthand like this. Yeah, here I didn't specify make, right? Yeah, I just use the shorthand. I'm not sure which is the best practice. I know there is one. I've read about that, and it has something to do with like memory. That's a good question. Let's let's find out. You then jump in, Daniel. Why I bring this up? The length, the length should be the amount of elements that are in it. I'm not sure what it would set the capacity by default. Um, so that so that so that thing had seven items in it. Its length, its starting length, would be seven. So All right. I'm not sure what capacity we start off at. So uh, format uh, print line, and I have a, my slice, and I need length my slice, and then we also learned that there's a cap. And so just shorthand notation, what does it give me? And I think my other terminal actually is uh, bigger and easier to read. So change into document, go, source, get, goes, uh, golang training. And I am in 1701, go run main. And uh, length and capacity were both six. So what happens if I was to, uh, you know, add to it or, I don't know, that's, that's enough. Bip, 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 bip. Yeah. Yeah, it go up, just doubles. Did you understand that? Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, if we added if we added something else, its length would go up to seven, and its capacity would double up to twelve. Yeah. So the capacity of the slice is the, the, the number of items in it because there are six items. So the length is how many items are in it. The capacity is how much space is reserved. How much space you got reserved for stuff. 
So adding stuff and removing stuff while you still have capacity is going to be very fast. But if you don't have capacity, then it has to do a bunch of work to get you more capacity. Whoops. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. So it was uh, six and six. We add another element, and uh, length went up to seven. We now have seven elements, and capacity went up to twelve. So capacity double. Yeah. And then if we were to continue adding elements. Right, we'd see that go up to 24 once we got to 13. So we could do this. Seven, 12, eight, 12, nine, 12, and for some reason, oh, I went into double digits. Nine, 12, nine, 12, 11, 12, 12, 12, 13, 24. So on that one, when I went to length of 13, capacity went to 24. That's kind of cool. So once the length reaches the capacity, it doubles mm -hmm. exponential. Mm -hmm. Except the capacity reserves space. So making slice, slicing a slice. So that's slicing a slice right here. My slice is all these strings. And if I ask for uh, one colon two, and here's, here's what I get. So uh, it goes from not zero, good morning, but gives me the first element. And it does that up to the second element, but not including the second element. So it just gave me that. So that's just an example of slicing a slice. And we saw slicing the other day. Making a slice. So here we get into make versus new. And where is that? That's coming up. Oh, we're not quite getting into make versus new. Soon. So making a slice. If we think that our slice might grow, we can set a capacity larger than the length. This gives our slice room to grow without Golang having to create a new underlying array every time our slice grows. This is what we've been talking about. When the slice exceeds capacity, then a new underlying array will be created. These arrays typically, I've heard from Caleb and we just proved, double in size each time they're created, 2, 4, 8, 16. I've also seen that since I wrote this in the docs somewhere. So here, you know, this will be both length and capacity. Here, this is length, that's capacity. The screen's so, oh, still okay for you guys up there? Yeah, all right. Uh, here's an index out of range error. And uh, what happened? I had three, five, and I did zero, one, two, three. And uh, so my length, my capacity, making a string, and I put in one, zero, one, two, and, oh, there's nothing there, right? I didn't use a pen. Right, saying, let me put this in slot three, and it's like, eh, or slot four, and, and uh, saying there is no there. I have to use a pin to make that work. So that gives me an index out of range. So here, if I do a pin, no problem. Pinning beyond capacity to a slice. So that's kind of what we were just experimenting with. Appending a slice to a slice, two slices, and then notice that dot 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 syntax because it's a multiple number of arguments. Not necessarily intuitive for me right there, right? Because I just think, oh, it's a slice, stick it in there, but it pins one at a time, I guess. Is that right? Right way to say that. If I ever say something wrong, Daniel, just correct me. 
you, know, you don't want to put the entire slice into the new spot. You put the content into the slice. Right. That, that makes sense. So we're putting in ints each time. We're not putting in a slice of ints all at once. Again, I'm pinning a slice to slice, and then deleting from a slice. So deleting, there's no delete. You just basically append from one place to another and leave out the part you don't want. So here I'm saying, give me everything up to, not including two, zero, one, two. That's going to give me everything up to Wednesday. And then give me everything from three to the end, zero, one, two, three to the end. That doesn't seem right. Oh, up to but not including Wednesday, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. So it gives me Monday, Tuesday, not Wednesday. And then give me everything from 3 to the end, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, Thursday, Friday. So it gives me Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It leaves out Wednesday. So some exercises for you to do to reinforce all that. And then we're into maps. Slicing an array or a slice is uh, fairly fast. Just know. Don't worry about performance of creating a new slice like that. What do you think? Should I start a new video? Keep them short, or just keep recording on this one? Keep them short. So if you just need to look up one thing, stop. Because that one's already six.